Hi guys, welcome back to We Are Tottenham TV. I'm Barnaby Slater. I've just done the watch along to the Tottenham Hotspur 4, K League All Stars 3. Absolute banger of a game, pre season friendly. And uh, well, Tottenham were three up at half time. And I have to say, I called it myself, this will be an easy second half. Spurs will bring on the kids at 60 minutes, will knock the ball around, tiki taka, take the piss out of this team. It was not thus. Very early in the second half, the K-League All-Stars suddenly found some pace from somewhere and some guile and some desire. Got two goals in a couple of minutes and suddenly Spurs are under pressure. We then got the fourth and then let them score an absolute banger. But I'll go more into that. But what can we say about Tottenham's preseason so far? Four wins out of four. Again, very impressive performance from the youth players who came on. Very impressive players' uh, performances from the likes of Bergvall. Uh, Archie Gray, I thought, was good again. Um, Jamie Donnelly playing at left-back again, starting at left-back. So a lot to be positive about, in my opinion. But what I'm going to do is take you through how those goals went in during today's game, in case you missed it. Uh, the first goal, after a kind of... What, what would I say? Kind of cagey first half an hour. Spurs were making a number of chances, but mainly kind of long shots from outside of the box. Kind of getting the ball out wide. Son Hyung min who was playing left, and Daki Kulisevsky was playing in the force nine. Son Hyung min was getting the ball out left, cutting inside, and then laying it across, even either into Jamie Donnelly, who was taking up some beautiful place, uh, positions in kind of the half space, a kind of inverted fullback, but number 10 type role that our fullbacks play. Uh, who was in some lovely spaces, or he was playing it across then to uh, Pedro Porro, who had a couple of lovely shots from outside the box. So that was happening a lot in the first half an hour, but it was still nil-nil on 29 minutes when Deki Kulisevsky scored our opener, and it came from Son Heung-min coming in from the left, getting a shot off, and the keeper it just kind of deflecting off his chest and his arm, and Kulisevsky was first to the rebound. He showed the most commitment. He wanted it more, took a little touch away from the defender and hit it in just off the keeper's hand into the roof of the net. That was 1-0 Tottenham. In the 34th minute, uh, Lucas Bergvall hit the bar with a beautiful left-footed shot from a ball that came across. Uh, Tottenham are absolutely unrivaled in their ability to get to the byline and get the ball across the box to make chances like that. There really is no other club like us in terms of doing that at the moment. Bergvall struck it sweetly first time on his left foot with his laces, hit the underside of the bar, bounces down. At this point, you think it could be anything. Uh, 37th minute, Son Hyung min cuts in from the left, like I said, where he was hugging the touchline, and it was the most archetypal Hyung min son goal you are ever likely to see. Right foot. Whips it around, top left-hand corner, beautiful strike. Sonny races away with the old celebration. That was 2-0 Tottenham. Then, just before half-time, even in a friendly, I don't know why he was doing this, but the referee choosing to put two added minutes on, but it benefited Tottenham Hotspur because in the 47th minute, Sonny played a beautiful 1-2 with Deki Kulisevsky, and then with his first touch as he's running in on the 18-yard box, Sonny nutmegs the last centre-half, and then one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, gives him the eyes like he's going to place it to his left and just rolls it in past him on the keeper's right-hand side. 3-0 Tottenham at half-time. And like I said, there was only going to be one winner at that point. The K-League All-Stars were not uh, defending very well. They weren't helping out their full-backs at all. We were just getting in time and time again down the left. But I was wrong. At half-time, we made a couple of changes. And uh, I don't know, something kind of upset the rhythm of Tottenham's uh, performance. And uh, in the 51st minute, they scored their first goal. It was a, a shot across Brandon Austin, who uh, had come on at halftime for Guillermo Vicario. And uh, it was a half-decent save with his right hand. Gets across, but then just unfortunately, a secondary deflection with his other hand flicks it into the uh, path of their number nine, uh, Ily Ilyachenko. Got his first goal then. That was the 51st minute. And then 53rd minute, he scores his second. And we just gave far too much time to their right winger, who got a cross in, and uh, the ball just bounced in front of Ilyachenko. Nods it in, totally unmarked. Pedro Porro, I think, arguably could have been a lot more narrow. And I think Emerson Royale, who, well, I said at the start of the watch along, maybe bizarrely was starting again for Spurs, considering he's supposedly about to move to Milan any day now. But actually, Radu Dragushin has only just joined back up with the squad. So the only options were to play Emerson Royale at centre half or maybe Oliver Skip at centre half. So I can see why Emerson Royale started. But that was Ilyachenko's second goal in the 53rd minute. And then in the 67th minute, we by this point had brought on a lot of the kids. Will Lankshire was on, and uh, it was the most uh, Ange Postacoglu goal. I think we've seen this goal time and time again. Timo Werner had come in on the left. He was passed the ball by James Madison. All he needed was to use his little bit of pace, half a yard on his defender, and a beautiful left foot cro cross across the front of the box. And Will Lankshire, 
who so impressed all of Tottenham's coaching staff, the manager and the fans with his hold-up play, his target man play, his improvement, his number nine play this preseason, and he notches a goal. And then, so that made it 4-2, which, by the way, was my prediction for what I thought this game would be. Uh, but then, in the 80th minute, possibly the goal of the game. I mean, arguably the same, maybe his, this goal and Sonny's. Uh, the number eight whose name I cannot remember for the K-League All-Stars. He scored an absolutely banging volley after the K-League All-Stars had a, a corner from the right-hand side, out swinger. Brandon Austin actually did pretty well, gets two hands on it, good punch, and the punch went to about 26, 27 yards out. And the number eight, Danny Rose-esque. Danny Rose in his Arsenal debut-esque, but on his right foot, gets his laces on the volley. Absolute beauty. 4-3, and Spurs, frankly, after that, were hanging on. It was a very open game. Neither team very interested in getting many men behind the ball. And Yuk, um, you know, back when I was younger, Ozzy Ardiles was manager at Tottenham at one point, and he uh, had a famous five that he played basically up front. Jurgen Klinsmann, Teddy Sherring, and Darren Anderton, Nick Barmby, and Illy Dumitrescu. And yes, it was fun to watch, and we won our first game of the season, 4-3 at Sheffield Wednesday, and we had a decent little run, but when we stopped scoring, we were still conceding lots of goals. Now, I'm not saying that Postacoglu's side are going to go the same way as that Aussie Ardilo side, but we do concede a lot of goals, and especially on the transition. We just do not have enough men back to cover when clubs, uh, when teams break on us, and that's what happened today. I'll do a little bit of talk about how I think each player played. Vicario played the first half, didn't really have much to do, to be totally honest, just a few things with his feet. Um, I should say, of course, Yang min Hyuk did play, I think, at least the first half uh, for the Korea League All-Stars. He's the, the player that Spurs have bought. He looks very quick, uh, very like Sonny in terms of how he drives at defenders from the left-hand side. He had one good chance where he drove at Emerson Royal, did a step over, took it on his left-hand side, and then instead of going across the keeper, whacked it over the bar. But a very kind of forward-thinking, aggressive player, and that will suit Ange Postacoglu. So, yeah, as I said, Vicario didn't have much to do, really. Pedro Porro, I thought, played beautifully while he was on the pitch, took up some amazing positions in the kind of that classic inverted fullback number 10 position, had a few shots from outside the box, as I mentioned before. Royale did okay, I thought. He did pretty well, considering. Will he get his move to Milan now? It should happen pretty soon, all things considered. Ben Davis was Ben Davis, kind of six out of 10, playing as that fourth choice center half, uh, left-hand side of the two, did okay. Jamie Donnelly at left back impressed me a lot. Very impressive. He's so natural in that kind of inverted fullback role when he's attacking in that little half space. He just gets his head up all the time, plays beautiful little passes, always making the right decision. I can totally see why a lot of Fans who've been watching Donnelly in the unders age groups are really impressed with him. I've really liked him this uh, preseason, and for me, it'll be interesting to see whether we do let him go out on loan to maybe a championship club, or whether instead we keep him in the squad because he's so versatile, and we're going to have a lot of games in the Europa League and the cup competitions this season. Archie Gray started his first game at number six. He did Archie Gray things, really. He's got a lovely touch, always looking to go forward, always looking for the ball. And he's got a great little relationship there with Lucas Bergvall, who's my favorite young player at Spurs at the moment. Wrap him in cotton wool. I just think he's such an exciting player on the ball, always wants it, wants to boss the game, wants to be in charge of the tempo. And we haven't had enough players like that. Madison is a bit like that. I, I want to see him and Madison playing together at points this season because I think they can strike up a good relationship. Pat Matasar, I think, let me know what you think in the comments, but I think Pat Matasar was a little bit absent today. He's kind of more just legs and energy. I don't think he's quite fully fit yet. Uh, I've mentioned what I think of Bergball. Deki Kulisevsky in the nine, playing the force nine. Pretty decent, got his goal, always works hard. Good little one and two touch stuff. He will be an excellent, at the very least, squad player for Tottenham Hotspur this season. Still only 24 years old, remember that. Brennan Johnson, again, along with Pat Matasai, I didn't think was really in the game that much. And Hyung Min Son played beautifully, got his two goals. And proving that actually, as he said in an interview this week, that uh, left wing probably is the best position for him to play from. In terms of the substitutes, um, Spence came on for Poro, I thought looked really good. Uh, Brandon Austin, I should say, by the way, came off Vicario, made one incredibly important save down to his left from a, a chance from only about 12 yards out. So props to him. He did well. Spence looked excellent again. I think he's really playing his way into this squad for this entire season. If he kind of keeps his attitude and personality motivated and committed, then he can be an excellent player for Tottenham as a backup for Pedro Porro this season. Dragashin came on, 
bit lucky. He had one air shot with a, a cross that came across uh, the box and led to a chance that hit the bar, but the off side flag went up. Alfie Devine looked busy when he came on. George Abbott has surprised me. He's obviously uh, an excellent technical player as well from the youth team. He played centre back, I think, when he came on the other day. He came on left back today. Basuma looked nice, pretty sharp when he came on. Oliver Skip made a few mistakes, then got a terrible, terrible knee high foul towards the end of the game. Let's hope that's not too bad uh, an injury. James Madison looked a bit off it, if I'm honest, but did hit the post towards the back end of the game. Will Lankshire got his goal. I'm pleased for him, as I said already. Exciting young player. Timo Werner did what Timo Werner does. And Mikey Moore looked a little leggy, but uh, obviously a very exciting player. That has been your post-match reaction, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments about the performance today.